we should move on to the weekly preview. <laughs> And uh, as always, the weekly preview is brought to you by Ryan from Astute Newstead. And if you are uh, a homeowner and your rates are above 6.2% or you want to buy a home potentially, get into the the home market, Uh, maybe you want to even refinance and renovate or you just want to save some cash, then you can reach out to Ryan at Astute Newstead for an obligation and a cost-free inquiry. Won't cost you a thing. His link tree is in the description below. He will look after you. He's looked after all of us at Insight. And uh, yeah, we definitely have plenty of praise for him. And, uh, you know, he, he is an avid super coacher as well, Matrix. He uh, doesn't mind playing super coach and he goes all right, doesn't he? Oh, I wouldn't. He gets lucky, I'd say. Um, <laughs> but he's in our DMs constantly. Um, he's actually helping me out with a few things financially at the moment, uh, Ryan, which is always an excuse to uh, get me on the phone and talk about work for about 30 seconds and then have a 15 minute discussion about super coach. That's how we do it. It's uh, maybe he should provide some super coach tips as a part of his uh, Astute Newstead service, but good bloke, Hammer. So uh, he's always in the live chat. I wonder where he is. Uh, maybe he'll be, maybe he'll be around a little bit later, but yeah, hit, hit up Hammer. His link tree is in the description below. All the details that you need are there to get in touch with him. Now, uh, it's obviously time to, to go through buy, hold, sell as we do every single week where we talk about the best buyers, sells, and the players you should hold that are being well sold. So let's move into the trade targets for round 14. Targets acquired. I, I don't know about this one. And I don't, I don't usually start with the uh, questionable one, but I think this one's a big talking point. Talk to me about David Fafida and talk me into buying him. Big Fafida. Um, he doesn't play Origin. And that's, I suppose, where it's come from. Um, I didn't add him in. I believe it was Josh in the notes that's added for feeder. But he's probably the best sideways trade uh, from Angus Crichton, who, while having a very juicy matchup coming up, um, yeah, isn't playing. What's he playing? One of the next three. Uh, So that's where it comes from. But I'm just not 100% sure that for feeder doesn't make the Origin 2 team. So that's where my concern comes with. But look, anytime getting season long keeper David Fafida into your team is always a good opportunity. When you when you think David Fafida, and also we look at the Titans draw, they play sixteen and nineteen. So I, I maybe I guess that's probably the big calling card. Is that the 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 big talking point is Fafida being available for the next two major buys? But the question mark now becomes: Does he even get picked in in two and three? Does he get picked in state of origin two and three for Queensland? Like. Billy Slater seems like he's sending a message to David Fafita. That that's the yeah. way that I'm taking it anyway. Is like, oh, you know, David set a really high standard last year, and he hasn't quite met that. St- I'm, I'm like, what football have you been watching, Billy Slater? This bloke's been a fucking animal since he came back from injury. So I'm 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 unsure how how that's kind of going to play out. But I am worried about buying Fafita at 885k, which is a pretty penny, and then missing 16 and 19, and potentially then being benched. 17 and 20. That's a concern for yep. me. So I'll definitely be waiting. Uh, but in saying that, let's just say he does, for Josh's sake, play the 16 and 19 buy and they're, they're off him and they love Jaden Sewer and they reckon Brendan Piakura is the next coming of Jesus, then uh, maybe David Fafida could be probably the best buy of the week and you should get on now. Yeah. No, I, I really like it. And um, I suppose the next one that we're feeding into could get picked in Origin 2 and 3 as well. Uh, they were probably both the big outs from Origin, which is why they're, I suppose, they're in the buy list. And it's Latrell Mitchell. Um, again, hasn't been in tremendous form this year. Uh, but as a Queenslander, I can sleep easier knowing Latrell's not in the team. And I think that you could sort of say the same about Fafita. Um, Latrell's got some pretty nice matchups coming up. Um, and at fullback, where a lot of players have, you know, probably not Tedesco now, but when you're sitting there with Reese Walsh and Dylan Edwards, if they're not backing up, I could see myself panic trading in somebody like Luttrell. Luttrell is very, very firmly in my sights this week. And I've been a previous Luttrell owner this year and traded him out and said on the podcast publicly that I would never trade him back in and here I am. And I don't care. Um, <laughs> I just I just think... Um, Having a guy that's available 16 and 19, you know, I think there's probably a chance that Fafita plays Origin <coughs> before Luttrell does. 
That's just my honest opinion. I think that when they're looking at centers, they're playing Latrell out of position, which I know that Madge Maguire probably won't want to do this year. Um, so I, I feel like they're probably looking at genuine centers that play there every year. And I don't see them moving away from either Tedesco or Edwards throughout the three games, even if they win or lose. But um, there was a there was a comment in here by Jake Lindsay uh, in the chat saying, wait to see who wins tomorrow night, Ray Fafita. And I completely yeah. agree on probably both fronts with Fafita and Latrell. Um, I'd be waiting to see because I think if Queensland win, Fafita probably plays 16 at the bare minimum and he plays the next five games for the Titans. And if New South Wales win, I think we see Latrell play the next five games. But if one of those teams loses, they could be looking to shake up that squad and bring in one of these guns that they know can perform at that level. Yeah, I I agree with you on all fronts there. Like, oh, I just think they're so scary not to have in your Origin team. And I know there's a lot of Origin chat, but yeah, Latrell gets you 70, even when he does not look like a football player, honestly. Um, he gets you 70 just by turning up and walking on the field, uh, which is a really, really high floor. You know what? Even if he plays in Origin 2, right? His last three scores against the Gold Coast Titans, even though we have to go back a couple of years, have been 115, 112, and 118. Yep. Like, and then we look at the matchup for the South, and we might maybe bring it up on the on the page for all the YouTube viewers. Uh, you can see the South there in the middle of the page somewhat. Um, so they've got Gold Coast Titans, very nice matchup away this week. Into the Broncos, into Manly. And then they've got the buy in round 16. So, so long as you don't have too many buy players in, oh, sorry, round 17. Um, you don't have too many buy players in that mini buy where you need to field 17 players and you don't have too many Rabbitohs. I think Manly are on the buy as well um, and, and Titans. Uh, so if you don't have too many of those players and then you look at that 18, 19, 20 run for the Souths, like Para who leak points but are playing good footy, Dolphins who also leak points and the Tigers who are at the bottom of the ladder. Like, can you ask for a better real, can you ask for a better seven weeks from really any team in the comp? No, you can't. Um, the only thing I'm going to say there is where are Souths on the NRL ladder and can we really consider anything uh, a good matchup for the team that is currently lower than the West Tigers, which is what I want to put into perspective. Um, they're sitting there at 17th on the ladder. Like, yeah, the Titans are a really good matchup, but when you are 2-9, and nine, what is a good matchup to you? Good question. Um, Souths have been putrid to be fair. Like when you, when you look at what they've been putting up, it's been pretty ordinary. Um, I, I think the one thing maybe we can agree on is the fact that they score points. And yep. at the end of the day, if you're scoring points and conceding points, you're still going to score well, super coach wise. The over under yep. for this game is at 54.5 points. And I don't know whether you can see another total points over under that's that high, um, yep. for the rest of the season. So, uh, I'm still yeah, smashing I'm, overs. 100%. I, I think Latrell's a good buy this week. Um, and a few people copping, uh, ripping into me in the, in the chat saying that I backflip. You deserve um, it. Fair call. I'll take it. You know what? I don't care. As long as I uh, rank well, then uh, it's fine. Just follow me each week for advice, <laughs> but just don't follow my previous week if that counts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's talk about the next one, mate. Maybe you take this one away. Um, well, the next one, I suppose, goes hand in hand with Souths. Um, and it's Alex Johnston. Um, look, again, there's some really nice matchups, and if they can score points against these teams, then, yeah, Alex Johnston is a good matchup. I believe he's about 490K, uh, which is about the price I go to buy AJ every year. I think I've owned him the last three years through certain periods. Um, and you know what? If you told me at the start of the year that AJ would be 490K with that draw going forward, I would load up. I just wonder if it's a wait and see week for me with him. Um, but another guy you could kind of throw in with that is Dallin Wateni Zelezniak, uh, whereas he could nearly be considered a buy and a sell. He's been awful. But I think, and you said it earlier in the show, you might have to temper your expectations with him, even with that 33 break even, just because SJ's out this week. Yeah, DWZ's probably like, pretty high on the buy list to be fair like at his price and and from i think everybody's got short memories about what he did last year and with good reason dwz's been awesome for a good 12 months so i'll uh, probably 18 months to be fair 
And but the the big thing and the big reason behind DWZ scoring last year was that SJC and KDWZ combo on the right edge. They had that worked out last year, and maybe teams have figured them out, or maybe just the the lack of Sean Johnson moving forward. Uh, or we don't know when he's back. There's no word from the New Zealand Warriors about when he's going to be back. So. Yeah, I'd probably even just wait a week. Like at the end of the day, uh, and I think Josh has said this many times on the pod, you'd be happy to buy them at 510, 520, 530. It's still, a, it's still a pretty big discount on what you would get from a guy of that caliber. So maybe you can wait and here's a watch uh, this week. And same for AJ. Um, I think the only thing maybe saving me with, with Johnston is the fact that they play the Titans who leak a lot of points and also maybe the fact that you've got Latrell and Cody back. If Cody Walker wasn't back on that <coughs> left edge, maybe I'd be a little bit more concerned. Yeah. Yeah, well, Cody Walker's the guy that gets Johnston involved. He's playing. um, Yeah. And SJ not being around with uh, Dallin, yeah, kind of puts a line through him for me for at least this week. Uh, Ian Johnston said SJ's back next week. Uh, So if that's the case, then great. Uh, I think DWZ becomes a genuine option next week then. So yep. we'll, we'll probably have him in the buys next week if SJ's named. Uh, what about Bryce Cartwright, though, mate? And another guy that I'm probably looking at, um, you know, very kind of, uh, I guess we, we look at the last three games since he's been back from injury and he's played 80, 80 and 76 minutes, which is great. Um, you know, the Brad Arthur curse is kind of gone. We'd Maybe, uh, I don't know whether I can trust Trent Barrett either, to be fair, but <laughs> Cardi's looking pretty, pretty good. The base is up this, this year um, and the attacking points are surely close when Mitchell Moses is obviously back now in this team. Yeah. And I think we were all excited to see how Sean Lane would go when Mitchell Moses come back and enter the Cardi party because Sean Lane's not proven anything to me this year. Whereas Bryce Cartwright coming back from an injury, stepped straight into that starting spot, a uh, new coach. I can really get around it at this price. And with so many guys you want to get rid of, at that mid price, I'm looking at you, Morgan Smithies. I'm looking at you, Sean Lane. Uh, yeah, it might just be time to get back on the Cardi party. I know I had guns on here on Sunday, and yeah, it was an absolute lock for him. Started delving into the stats, and with the way Parramatta played this week, it could be a couple of Parramatta players that you can look to bring in this week, to be honest. I mean, they do miss round 16, so... If you are short on 16 numbers, maybe Parramatta aren't the best team to target short term. But, I mean, it, well, we talked about Jacob Preston last week. So maybe is it is it too late to get on Jacob Preston? I know Ian Johnson just chucked that in the chat. You could also be on the Preston party. He does have the buy next week. Though. No, I think paying 600K for Preston's too much. I think paying 530 was great. And we had a... F- he scored two tries for his 110. Fantastically. But I think you're paying at value or maybe a little bit overs at 600k whereas 500k you were paying at value but when he finds the line yeah we're going to get those 80s 90s and 100s yeah i'm i'm really liking cartwright i think he he could be a really nice option this week and and you know if you're not going to pay up and go to Fafita, maybe he's the next best option at 2rf because 2rf's weird <laughs> isn't it like you've got the top i think i reckon out of the top 10 to 12 2rf's most of them are playing origin or have a really pretty shitty buy schedule. So, yeah, not a huge fan. Um, what about this last one, mate? Because another Parramatta Eels player and a guy that was on the outer under BA's system, but uh, is the starting nine under Trent Barrett's. Yeah, and watching the trials, I was always a bit more of a fan. Like, hands is a bit more exciting than Lusick, and I think he's better for super coach. Uh, absolutely has bottomed out. Yeah, I can get around getting hands. It's just, you know, round 16 is the draw card for me that he's not playing. But Joey Lusick to Brennan Hands, anyone, if you're holding Joey Lusick, when he didn't get named, I actually thought of it as a blessing because he'd been scoring 30s and he couldn't drop in cash anymore. Um, Do you know what? If you want to go light on at hooker, yeah, hands is your hooker too for the rest of the year. That's... I guess your determining factor as to whether you buy hands this week, it's who's your hooker one. Um, you know, is it Danny Levi? Uh, you know, like that, that kind of determines whether you buy hands or not. But I think if you've got Harry Grant, if you've got Appy, if you've got JMK, it, any of those guys, I think paying up at hooker for two premium hookers just makes no sense this year. 
So I think, oh, and I was on the get Appy train this week, and I think he's a great buy if you've got two cheap hookers. Um, but if you've got <laughs> one primo, if you've got one primo hooker already, then I think Hands is going to be perfect as hooker too. So I, I like him this week, and he'll make some cash. Obviously, nearly bottom dollar, pretty close to bottom dollar. Um, yep. And Lusick is not in this starting seventeen; he's on the extended bench. And uh, can you imagine if everyone buys him and uh, Lusick comes in at the last minute and plays the fourteen role? Yeah, I can. This this year, I can. Yes, let's hope not. Let's hope it doesn't happen. Let's move on to the players you should hold. <laughs> this first one, I think he was a sell last week. I think he's a hold this week. If you didn't sell last week, I reckon you hold on to Gus Crichton because I think unless you're getting David for feeder, I reckon you hold. I don't see any other reason why you would trade Gus Crichton unless you're, uh, yeah, unless you're getting David Fafita. What are your thoughts on him? Yeah, I am holding Crichton. I have been holding him. I am finding myself a little bit short through this period. But again, my the way I'm playing the game is to save these trades and maybe drop some spots. I could probably see myself back down around 10,000th after Origin, but when I can be so aggressive, aggressive down the stretch and I think there'll be some people you know well into the single digits when we get to round 19 and round 20 um that's when I'm thinking I'm going to make my move so yeah Crichton it would be devastating for me to trade Crichton to Fafita only for Fafita to get picked for Origin 2 and I am no origin coach or anything like that. I'm a super coach, but I'm no origin coach. But if I was picking the team, I'd have Fafita in it, uh, which makes me really wary. Yeah, <clears throat> same for me. Uh, I traded Crichton last week, and I think you know the reason for that was because he was playing one game in four weeks. And if you didn't trade last week, now he plays one game in three weeks. So like that appeal kind of decreases a little bit. And obviously the Roosters, who are they playing next week? They've got uh, – it's not the easiest of matchups from memory. The Eels, I think. Yeah. So, I mean, look, the Eels have been okay, and they've got their stars back now, I guess you could call them. Um, uh, yeah, you're right. They've got the Eels in 15. So, I mean, he's going to be running at uh, that edge of Bryce Cartwright from memory. So, mm -hmm. yeah, look, I, I think it's not it's not an amazing matchup by any means. So, yeah, I think if you've still got Gus Crichton in your team, I reckon you hold him because uh, yeah, even though he's going to play one in three, I think then he goes and play. If he backs up, he plays seventeen. He plays eighteen. He plays twenty. Um, so yeah, definitely worth worth uh, worth holding. I think. Talk to us about the next one, mate, because uh, Ian Johnson's adamant. He, he reckons that Hines is definitely not a hold. What would you be doing in this scenario if you're a Nico Hines holder? I am in this scenario. I'm actually a Nico SJ owner. So slide into my DMs. Yeah, this teamless Tuesday was dog shit, but yeah, Nico Hines. Uh, if you don't need the cash or you don't need the numbers, you there is a world where, like, I was in free loop situation anyway with my team, only having, you know, 17 or 18 players there. Um, I don't want to waste trades getting Nico in and out again, um, especially when the games that Nico plays, he could well outscore somebody that you're going to bring in in half the amount of games. I just don't want to watch another game where I don't own Nico and I'm not burning two trades in three weeks when we've all been so aggressive because uh, all these injuries have ripped us a new one this year. I'm going to be holding Nico Hines. Let's look at Nico Hines' draw. And there's a um, there's a T-shirt coming, surely, around like, <laughs> I don't want to watch another game without Nico Hines on my team. Because I reckon you've said yeah. that probably four or five weeks in a row since you bought him. Uh, you yeah. look at the Sharks' draw from round 15 and you go, all right, they, they play Broncos this week. Uh, who knows if all their origin stars back up? If, so, if there's any know, week you want to play the Broncos, it's this week, isn't it? The difference is, uh, unfortunately, Nico's not named. So that's a disregard. Yeah. You know, any sort of Broncos chat. But then you go Dolphins round 15. That's kind of a matchup at home at Shark Park that you want to own him. And then who who guarantees that he's going to play origin in round 19? By the time either New South Wales or Queensland win game one, we don't know how that's going to play. So our opinion could change completely. But I think if if uh, New South Wales win game one and he's the starting halfback, I think he probably retains that spot. If they lose, I reckon we'll see Moses in in uh, Origin two and three. So we could get Nico against the West Tigers in round nineteen. 
And look, you might want, you might probably say, well, I'll get him much cheaper because he's got 190 break even. Who says he doesn't score 120, 130 against the Dolphins, loses 50K, and then he's still 930K coming into the Bulldogs, Gold Coast, and Tigers. Bulldogs are a nice, ma- a tough matchup this year, to be fair. But the Gold Coast Titans into the Tigers is is two teams that I would want to own him if he does, obviously, not play Origin 3. So round 20, he's got the buy as well, though, so that's not ideal. So it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because this was the main question um, at the start of the pod. People were asking, talk about hold versus sell Nico Hines. I'm in the hold camp because I don't need the number. And maybe that's maybe that's the message. If you're looking pretty, sitting pretty this week and you don't need the numbers and you also don't need the cash from a Nico to a Jerome Hughes or a Nico to a Moses or a Nico to a Sam, or you won't go Sam Walker this week, but um, if you don't need the cash and you don't need the extra number this week because you're struggling, maybe Nico's a hold and you look at it next week. That's maybe the way I'd look at it. Yeah, I I agree with you. And there's no harm in holding him till round 16 either to work out what happens with Origin 2. Like, he misses one of the next two. Fine. Uh, IJ's in the, in the chat saying he misses 16, 17, 19, and 20. Like, there's no harm holding him for that Dolphins matchup and just wait and see uh, with, with Nico. It's just one more week. You own him. It's just one week. Look, you cop an AE. I don't think too many people have 20 people going into this week. It's not the end of the world. No. No, I agree. That's fair. Um, and it, look, the, I guess maybe the message here, oh, shit, I've got this. I've still got the buy draw up on the uh, screen. Don't mind me. Um, where, like when you pop Ian's chat uh, up here, we've got Hines could miss 14. Well, he does miss 14. Uh, he could miss 16. He does miss 16 because he's got the buy. So 14 and 16, write them off. 15 against the Dolphins, he should play. 17 is, we don't know whether he's going to back up or not. So that's a could. He could miss 19 if he gets picked for origin and he definitely misses 20. So he definitely misses 14, 16 and 20, 17 and 19 are the question marks. But I think maybe what's holding on is, is the fact that he um, does have that really nice draw. So maybe, maybe yep. that's it. And, um, Simon Brown holding onto the same joke every single week, mate, come up with some new content, would you? Uh, something new to come at me with would be good. Yeah. Uh, Nico's an interesting one, but let's move on to David Armstrong, mate. What do you reckon about him? Because he's got a uh, a pretty low break even still and and could be a hold this week considering he's been named at fullback. But we've got Fletcher Sharp in the reserves who Barry Tui's come out and said there's every chance he could be named at fullback this week. Yeah, I think he's a hold for now. And if, it, if there's a late switch, I'm 100% trading him out because I think it was Fletcher Sharp's spot to lose. He was just injured. Uh, but yeah, David Armstrong's been playing really good footy outside of last week when Newcastle played really bad. There's no reason to trade out David Armstrong this week. Still has a negative or still has a break even of 12. Um, yeah, just hold on to him for one more week if he's named. Yep. Yep. Agreed. I'm going to star this comment from Hamo because uh, we'll cover this one later after we finish buy, hold and sell. But yeah, potentially a new podcast room. On Sunday, we'll uh, we'll see how we go. But um, yeah, no, I agree on Armstrong. Um, I think uh, if look, when do the Knights play? I guess is probably the better question because we'll need to make a decision on when the uh, when to um, Sunday, two o'clock. That sucks because um, that's yeah. late in the round. Um, you know, if he was playing early in the round, we'd be able to pull the pin. But we can't really wait until even the twenty-four hour cut would be two p.m. Saturday. So not ideal. Yep. Also traveling to to Melbourne. So I, I'm probably I'm probably leaning to if he's your only guy in your center wing that you can trade to an upgrade. I, d- I don't hate moving him on, but I think in any other scenario, I think he's a hold this week with the low break even. I think it's a 12, 12 break even. And then look at the end of the day, if he if he doesn't play, you can potentially move him on to someone who does play at the rest uh, the rest of the week. We still got Panthers, Manly, Bulldogs, and Para that you could move yep. him on to another. Yep. Player in in one of those teams at the back end of the round. Just keep your uh, maybe keep your boost active or, or keep a trade up your sleeve if you do want to make that or pull that pin. Um, Blaze Talangi, now definitely a hold. Named in the centres, negative twenty two break even. Didn't play last week, which means it didn't hurt his cash gen, which is huge for super coaches. Yeah, I traded Blaze Talangi to uh, David Armstrong. So guess how I'm feeling at the moment? It's angry. 
Um, but this is why I don't overreact and burn some trades. Being conservative all year has suited me. Uh, this was the one time I wasn't after saying I'd miss out on David Armstrong. But, yeah, if you've got Talungi, hold him at center. Cash Jen is going to restart a little bit. I don't expect him to score hundreds at center. Uh, he's just not that guy at center, I don't think. But in a better Eels attack, yeah, look, him getting some 40s and 50s and regenerating that cash gen until about round 16, um, round 17, I can see happening. Fair call. I, I think I'm I'm a little bit pissed off at myself for trading Blaze Talangi so early. Um, mm-hmm. I, I moved him on when he wasn't named and I was like, fuck, all right, uh, time to trade him. And, and look, I'm not upset with the trade itself, but yeah, it, it's uh, there's a bit of cash to be made still, I think. Uh, with Blaze. So definitely a hold there. And what about the last two, mate? Because uh, a couple of Origin guys that people are probably hastily moving on. Yeah, I was getting a lot of messages just about Cotter and Val. Um, I don't know if you can get that buy schedule back up again. Um, Don't worry, I have it. Um, Cowboys are pretty favorable through the buys. Like, yeah, these guys were going to miss 16 anyway. Uh, My experience experience in watching uh, Todd Payton is usually these guys back up. So I think maybe they play 14 this week. Uh, They're named on the extended bench. Uh, Play 15, of course. Uh, They weren't playing 16 anyway, so you haven't really lost anything. I think they could back up against the Panthers. And then, yeah, they missed round 19 again. And I think they could back up again. I don't actually think it's too bad for the Cowboys when it comes to Cotter and Val. And they're both guys that I think will be wanting uh, to keep playing, especially with where Cowboys are on the ladder. I think we are overreacting if you're trading out Ruben Cotter or Valentine Holmes this week. Of Val, I completely agree with because he really burnt us last year. For anybody who sold Val before the buyers thinking he was going to play one in four and you know, it's the same kind of chat we're having about Crichton. Oh, I really hope we're not having the same conversation next year. But uh, Val Holmes, yeah, he he was a guy that you could move on last year and fuck, he hurt, it. He hurt us big. He averaged, I think, 110, 115 through that buy period. So, um, but, but Ruben Cotter's an interesting one. I actually don't mind selling him just purely because I think, like, we, we looked at last year and we look at Ruben Cotter's impact through Origin and he, he definitely had less of an impact. He definitely, his scores went down. His average went down throughout the origin period because he did play less minutes. Um, whether that was off the back of Billy Slater saying to Todd Payton, hey, I need I need Rubes to be good to go in uh, two and three. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'd, it, look, if you've got other fires to put out, obviously Rubes are hold. But um, yeah. I think if you've got him in second row, he's a sell. But if you've got him in front row forward, and maybe it's just my mentality this year, you don't want to burn a trade getting Ruben Cotter out. How many trades would you need to have to be to make that viable though? To to move on Ruben Cotter or to move on one of these guys and go, you know what, I don't really care because I've I've got enough trades. The line is twenty three point five. Twenty three point five. Okay, that's a lot of fucking trades. Yeah. I, I'll, I could have 17 after this week if I boost. So don't trade Ruben Cotter out. I don't have him, so yeah, I it's fine. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I know what you mean. Um, but, uh, yeah, a few holds there in that list. Crichton, Nico, Armstrong, Blaze, Talungi, Cotter, Val. Um, it, it's all pending origin. And I think what we'll do is we'll probably do a bit of an update maybe in the Discord on uh, on Thursday after origin's kind of been and gone and work out what we're going to do with some of these guys who are on the fence about because it does it does matter what happens on Origin on Wednesday night. So, uh, yeah, jump in the free Discord there. It's in the link description below, and, uh, yeah, you'll, uh, you'll see our update in there. But let's talk about the players you definitely should move on. Uh, it's the uh, – it's Brendan Hands from Wish, Joey Lusick. Time to move. Yeah, it's time to go. Again, he's not hurting you if you have the numbers, so at least he doesn't drop cash anymore. But when Brendan Hands is there, just juicy, right for the picking. Uh, yeah, use your hands to grab your phone and trade Joey Lusick out. Yeah, bit of a no-brainer, that one. Obviously, he's not picked. The next one, this guy's picked, and he's actually picked to start, but I think he's still a sell. Uh, uh, our mate Samuel Hughes, unfortunately. Your front row forward, too. Uh yeah, 
Sammy. He's actually my front row forward four now, I think, that you'll find, um, because uh, Viliami Fafita is better than him. Well, uh, yeah. If that doesn't tell you someone's a sell, then I don't know what will. <laughs> Because uh, Sam Hughes, 354K, he lost 31K last week. He also comes into this game with a 65 break even. He basically needs to score a try to even cover his cash. And uh, he will start to pretty much lose all of the cash that he has made this year. He's made 115K from where he is right now, obviously starting at about that 239K mark. But um, yeah, it's, there, there's concern there now for Sam Hughes. Even though he's starting, he only played 15 minutes last week. Yep. That's that's the issue. The problem is people are probably going to hold this guy because he's a number for round sixteen, which yeah, could I, I, I probably him. need his I probably need his fifteen points this week and in, in round sixteen. So, well, well yeah, good. Um, good luck with that. I would love to move him on. I don't think I can. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm stuck with him uh, because I'm kind of looking at like. Liam Henry's kind of re-sparked his cash gen now with that minus 26 break even this week. He's coming off a 74 and a 76, so they're going to be in his rolling average for another fortnight, three weeks minimum. Like, he could be up near 450, 500K, Liam Henry, in the next, like, three, four weeks. If he keep, like Even off the bench this week, I think he's just a hold. So if you're going to move someone on in front row, it's got to be Hughes. But the problem is he's, he's dropped too much cash, and you can't get to anybody decent. If you don't have Samuel Afainu, I think Hughes to Samuel Afainu this week is a no-brainer. I thought you were going to say, if you don't have Samuel Afainu, delete your app. <laughs> no, not that aggressive. That's something you'd say. Yeah, I agree. Take us into the next one, mate. Uh, we have Morgan Smithies. He has done his job, the uh, Englishman, and it's time to go. Uh, he's not playing this week. Uh, you can... Basically, go sideways to somebody like the Cardi Party um, who has bottomed out. Uh, if you have those handy jewels, you can go to Dallin with Tenny Zalesniak. You can get to Alex Johnston, some guys on some better draws. Um, he's at a really good price to go sideways to anyone else. Um, he's not looking as good as he did at the start of the year either. I think he'll start to leave for cash. Uh, yeah, it's time to get rid of Smithy's crisps. This might be the last time we talk about him this year. Probably. I mean, look, the reason people will hold him again is that round 16 buy. You know, he does have the buy this week, but if you need a number, Smithies is the one to go. If you need somebody for 16, maybe you hold him and if you're fine this week. But look, he's just a plotter. Um, you know, like the, he's the guy that will get you 40 to 47 every single week. And that's pretty much where it ends, uh, which, which is disappointing because we had high hopes for Smithies, but... Yeah, he is a poor man's – who's a plotter in uh, – he's a poor man's Adam Elliott. There you go. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, like yeah, move him on. Uh, what about Sean Lane, though? He came back in, and played through the middle. So he's been benched by Trent Barrett. Maybe sending a message, I don't know. But he came on through the middle of the field and played as a prop in, uh, in last round. So what are your thoughts on Lane? I think he's a move on. Yeah, I – think you've just got to get rid of him again you could go lane to somebody like cartwright and it not cost you too much uh i think lane was always going to be a season long keeper as long as he's playing 80 minutes he's now off the bench obviously not playing 80 minutes i can't see a reason to hold him regardless of how many if you've got 14 trades he's still a trade out that's one of my better trade outs this year I just moved him on real early on and I just thought, fuck it, this guy's just not looking the same way. And I, or I think maybe it was when Moses went out and uh, we knew Moses was out for a while and Gutho was out. I thought, uh, look, Dylan Brown obviously is not going to have that left edge kind of link up with Lane. So I'll move him on and I'm happy with that. But um, yeah, no, I think he's he's definitely a trade at his price. Um, and we've also got Trey Fuller, mate, on the sell list, obviously uh, with a buy this week, but I think he's done his job for the most part. He's made 240K. It's just time to move on to a hopefully a primo. Hopefully you've got enough cash in the bank to move him on to a Latrell or a, or a, or a primo fullback, a drink water or something like that. That had to be your plan if you had Fuller. It didn't work out. Um, look, it was due to bad luck, really, but you probably held on to him for three weeks too long. Cut your losses. You made a mistake. Move on. Pretty much. 